tricks while pros play like you. Let me explain. I picked all those ideas from FPL games, which means pro players didn't execute these ideas in official matches with their teams, where usually everything is much more coordinated, but these clips are taken straight from Face It, where pros play mixed teams and don't have that great support from their teammates, as in their officials in a team environment. Still, ideas are ideas, they don't differ that much, and here's some hippie stuff that I found while browsing around different demos. Firstly, Plesson, he goes to Pop Dog, gets stuck behind this edge, aims at the ladder like shown, and left click throws his molotov. It lands to upper and he actually uses it to hide himself and surprise enemies above pop dog area. Although on the ladder he's inaccurate, he manages to do some damage to Tapson while taking only 8 HP damage himself and that was because he was too high up there plus got hurt by the molotov fire. Afterwards he throws a smoke with the exact same lineup, it will again do a cool bounce from the ladder, land close to it above pop dog and cause some chaos up there. Unfortunately he died after executing his cool ideas, this is what I talked about in the brief intro, these FPL games play out a little differently, in a team environment you could have better communication, better cover from A to not get sandwiched in pop like he did here. But thanks to Plesson we now know how to hide ourselves between the Molotov fire. What a hot stuff. Next up does to Simple and A bombsite. He's chilling a bit here, browsing down to long, but then he feels they need to get some short control. So he asks Victoria Victor to boost him and make a creative two-man tower like that. A couple of seconds passed and Simple took most likely the maximum out from this boost. Straight up double kill with headshots only. Luckily we had one talented camera operator down in short who could provide us this opposite side view. This looked more like a team move, at least great timings and teamwork were involved this time, yet again it most likely only happens in FPL in more free environment as we haven't seen and probably won't imagine Navi using this two man tower in their officials because it's too risky, never know though. Alright, we are on Inferno, Magix POV. After plant situation, 1 versus 4, his main goal is to save his weapon, but he's also going for exit frags with his sneaky position over here. And it's sneaky indeed. This was just a very unlucky flash timing, but the second guy who comes out from banana, Nico, does the very same. He feels he checks T ramp, but in reality it's not enough. No one is ready for this sneaky angle. So if you want to surprise your enemies in the similar situation, then this position could easily work out. If it works in FPL, it indeed has some potential. And so does my audience. You have potential to do everything. If you're willing to subscribe and we collect 1 million subscribers before May ends, I repeat before May ends. I will fly one lucky winner with a friend out to the major. It's gonna be fully all included trip for you, so rules are easy. 1 million subscribers before May ends, I will browse through my subs, pick one random winner with a friend to have most likely a CSGO experience of their lifetime in 2020 fall major. No one even knows the location yet, but it's gonna be lit. Of course, if it happens, I will make a video out of it as well, and as there's at least 100k non-subs watching this video, in theory it's possible to gather 1 million subs within the next 2 weeks. Do your own decisions and I hope to meet one of you in the second major of 2020. We're gonna continue the video with Snappy's POV. Just not the most common flash out there for short as he throws it from outside long. Pretty loosey goosey position on the stone edge. Aim at the right bottom side of this wooden window thingy. If your teammates are ready, then run and jump throw. Flash goes over the buildings and works especially well for all short defenders who hold it from above the stairs. But don't worry, it also works for the stairs corner. So use what works best for you. This is a great alternative if you want to leave one of your teammates lurk long late. Easy as that. Inferno and three CTs here show us how they boost to the balconies at a short. One guy just needs to stand on the haystack. It's for sure a safer version than boost under the roof. And I also like the fact that they boost two guys up there with nice different angles so they can bait slash help each other well. I can't leave out the legendary, feel free to try it out yourself. Next up a clip why simple is simple and he likes to do those type of plays a lot in FPL. Firstly he contests long, falls back and feels someone may be close. Then he does the fake sound like he's going away to middle, pay attention that he doesn't do it in the obvious way, he sneaks first and starts running later, like a guy who really escapes middle would actually do. But he is simple and this move results in an easy kill onto Nico. 
just in case he does the same thing one more time. This is how well he plays with the sounds. Super general. All right, Mirage and S tag with one versus one clutch against Nico. By the way, he only has 8 HP. Somehow he wins it and executes an unseen graffiti trick. Firstly, he sprays down an unhappy face, then defuses the bomb. And as you know, usually you need to wait 45 seconds to spray another graffiti. But when you get a frag or round ends, etc., you have a chance to spray immediately after that. So he continues the graffiti story with a pretty obvious message. I'm dead now. We hope to see you graffiti trash talking in big tournaments as tag. Don't leave it to FPL only. Train, and we are in Lobanika's POV. As he values cleanliness, he doesn't want to be a dirty guy, then sometimes he likes to play this soap angle that I wasn't aware of. And I put it into a video because some of you may not have seen it as well. If you want to play it passive, I believe it's not a bad way how to hold pop, as you're pretty well hidden behind all those things on the shelf. And now, Daddy Loba out. Warm up in FPL, another name that I have no idea how to correctly pronounce and I'm lazy enough not to google, so Baima shows his movement level plus does the Inferno B bombsite self boost with the first try. It looked pretty easy, but if we look at the other FPL players, we get the harsh reality, it's not that simple how it seemed. Finally after lots of tries, Brocky joins him to this fabulous spot. Another idea from Inferno and we are in Victor's POV. Smoke without an exact lineup. You hate those and forget those lineups anyways. So here all you have to know is that when you throw your smoke close to this apps corner like Victor does here, it creates a cool angle for you for short. Of course it only works if they push A from short and it also fully smokes apps without leaving any gaps for T side to work with. Looks good, maybe even better than Dozia. Next up, Dust 2, again a saving situation and we are in Eyes of Brocky. Action happens in B tunnels and it's very exciting indeed. Brocky knows CSGO models well, knows where to stay to be hidden behind that post for lower and he pulls it off perfectly. Actually, if we look at NBK's POV, he sees him just a bit too late, as you're not used to pre-aim and clear this post position like that. Just another little useless moment that may inspire you and actually become helpful in a certain situation. Alright, we all love Morocco, we all love Dust too, so we stay on this map. Just gonna switch POVs from Latvia to Ukraine and Simple will show us his simple way how to do the default short smoke. Get stuck to this corner in short, aim around this amazing building corner and if you're ready then of course a left click throw. Magical bounce, then a couple of more bounces and it serves as a great covering short smoke for you. It lands a bit closer to the box so it doesn't leave you the one way gap there but I guess it just adds an extra bit of safety. Just enjoy another alternative short smoke that has a pretty easy lineup. Iron's eyes and we are on train, to be more precise than Ivy. They have maintained some control over here, now Regon smokes green train side and to add a bit of sneakiness they try the box boost, which actually gets them a frag to a bomb train guy. Easy as that. When we have a closer look here, we can see that Victor carefully holds left side of the smoke and wasn't ready at all for this upper sneaky box peep. If it catches FPL players like that, it should be working in your games as well. Just make sure to not abuse it. Sometimes once or twice a game is enough to bring a little change to the table. As Ivy is very prestigious place in the whole Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Tapson will show us a perfect flash for it. Stand close to the red train and aim at the building line like shown. Left click throw. Here you have your undutchable flash for Ivy. As you can see, the best thing that Blessing could do, or at least he thought he could do, was to just blindly spray spam a bit. We all love easy to line up undutchable flashes. Use them well. Next up again, the same smart player Tapson, and here I have to admit that I found a very very hippie little detail that he used as a T while coming out from Pop Dog. Some of you may even complain that, hey, what trick it is, it's nothing, but I have to present it even for the minority who enjoys all those small details. Before going out Pop, he hugs this door frame and zooms at the spot like shown, just to be completely ready for Ivy angles. This is a headshot level pre-aiming spot. When he goes out now, he already has his crosshair 100% ready for the guys behind green train slash ivy. It may seem like nothing, yep you don't need it even in global matchmaking but these tiny details help pros to win rounds. 
wall right I M O R R S P O V on overpass. He runs through T spawn towards playground. Iken tries to flank him, he hears it, and nicely uses this upper ground to jump and surprise Iken with his positioning. This jump for sure helped him to win the duel. I don't know if I'm fan of the dirty little celebration afterwards, but the jump indeed was amazingly well timed and caught Icon off guard. As we have a look at victim's POV, he had to be confused, enemy ran right at first and then boom, left side contact. At least you tried Icon. And after one high jump, Imor wasn't done yet, he shows off his skills by doing a little wall right here. Just with the exception that he's not riding. <laughs> 